I'm Dr. Fakir Avari and this is Non-Inferiority Clinical Pause Trials. Pause this video and take a moment to review these definitions. Now, let's take a look at the quality of evidence hierarchy. At the bottom of the pyramid, you can see that we have the lower, lowest uh, quality of evidence. And these are data from animal data, simulation study, and expert opinion. Sometimes in the absence of higher quality evidence, these uh, studies can actually be useful. Now, higher in the pyramid, we have case reports and case series, and these are descriptive studies. Slightly higher quality than this, we have case control studies and cohort studies, which are observational studies. And then we have very high quality evidence from control trials. So we have non-randomized control trials and randomized control trials, and these are extremely important because these are experimental studies. And I'll mention why this is very important. And of course, at the top of the pyramid, we have systematic reviews and meta-analysis, which we will discuss on a later day. The first learning objective is distinguish between superiority and non-inferiority clinical trials. Let's take a look at randomized clinical trials. There are three general designs of RCTs. The first one is a superiority trial. The point of superiority trial is to show the treatment in intervention group is more effective or superior compared to control group. This design is used for establishing new standard of care, meaning that in the absence of standard of care, it's ethical to give a control group a placebo. In situations where, uh, where we have good standard of care, it might be unethical to give the intervention group a treatment that is not standard of care. The second design is non-inferiority trials. This design is to show that the treatment is not worse compared to control group. It is used for establishing alternative care. In other words, it's used when we have a drug that's not necessarily superior to the standard of care, but it might be another alternative. So we will use a non-inferiority design for that. And the last design is equivalence, which is used to show the treatment is not more effective and is not worse compared to control group. This design is used for establishing generic drugs that are equivalent to their brand formulation. Now, for superiority studies, the primary objective is to determine the magnitude of increased benefit of the experimental intervention over standard therapy for effectiveness outcomes. In non-inferiority studies, the researchers are unconcerned if the experimental is better as long as it is not much worse. And I'll mention what this means, not much worse. Now, let's take a look at non-inferiority margin, which is known as delta. So how much worse or how much less effective really depends on the importance of the effectiveness outcome and the magnitude of the reduction in harm or burden achieved by the new treatment. So the threshold for how much worse is actually known as non-inferiority threshold or non-inferiority margin and it's denoted as delta. Now keep in mind that there is no universally accepted method for defining an appropriate threshold. However, the FDA in the US actually has produced a guidance for industry which actually gives guidance about uh, choosing a non-inferiority margin. 